is eight o'clock. It is Tuesday night. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at, and I'm here with you. Yes, it's Buddy with the DJ Roundtable yet again. And uh, side note for you guys, we will not be here next week on July 4th. We're going to be off for the 4th of July. So everyone can spend time with their friends and family. And uh, also want to make sure that you guys are aware of that. So if you're watching this on Monday on YouTube, there will not be an episode on Tuesday night. And you'll have to wait an extra week for another episode. But I have some other stuff I'm going to be putting up there, some other uh, unboxings and so forth, so on. So I want to thank you guys all for coming in. And I wanted to start off tonight with a question. If I can pull it up. <laughs> Always love when uh, technology doesn't want to do 100%. Um, and this is from the last round table as you hear some music in the background um one question this is from dj mikey mike from uh pa uh question if you are playing at a wedding that has multiple rooms and you have to be in the smallest room or a room next to a dj who is very loud has volume maxed out and they will not th uh lower the music and they're drowning out your music, what is the correct solution? And I've run into this personally where I've been back to back. I could hear the bass coming through the floating wall and the music coming through the floating wall hitting me. But I was loud enough that the people in front of me could not hear what was going on behind me. And it was very frustrating to say the least is that you're listening to a beat and you're trying to listen to the beat coming out of your spe speakers and you hear another beat and you're like, wait, which beat am I listening to? Cause you, you catch it really quick. And it's like, well, okay. Uh, I need a beat match. What I have. So you kind of got to pay attention a little bit more, but uh, I've run into that before and, and had had DJs that uh, basically have told management to uh, tell me to pound sand. And all you gotta do is, you know, kind of grin and bear it and work through it. Uh, Wayne, have you been into a venue that has multiple events going on, be it a wedding party, whatever, and had a DJ next to you through one of those beautiful floating walls and their sounds coming through, especially if it's off in time, you're having dinner and they're having intros and then there are there earlier than you are, they're having dance floor. You're still having dinner. I've run into that that you're trying to play dinner music, you know, whatever your dinner music is, and the party next door is already popping off, and they're playing, you know, uh, Get Low and stuff like that already to start everything off next door. What, what do you usually do? How do you usually compensate for that? Uh, it my The one event that I have at the place that I was telling you about that was real strict about the time limit getting in, it's like they have a party center in the basement. That's where I've been a couple of times, but they have a big party um stage upstairs and so one night when i was djing they had the local radio dj the big radio dj upstairs so he's really like pumping it so it wasn't like the music was bleeding we can hear it but then once i turned my my stuff on i cranked it and so it pretty much like offset so i never really really ran into a thing where it was like that's overpowering my system and then two i, I Take that back. I have been at like outdoor events where they have like street festivals or whatever, where I'm over here doing my thing, but then you can still hear the other person across the um, street. But so far, I've been able to turn up my stuff and pretty much offset what's going on. Okay. And that, that's, that's very important because we want to make sure that we, we I, I always go back and forth. I don't want to be in the bad DJ list for a venue the, vet, the DJ comes in, it's difficult to work with. So if a person comes walking in and says, hey, you know, you're a little loud or something like that, I, I try to compensate. I try to say, okay, fine, group, what can I do? Do I lower the mids a little bit, lower the bass a little bit, rechange re EQ? Um, so it's one of the things you always, you know, want to work with them. But sometimes, again, the DJs in the other room, they don't care. And again, I've been told basically, hey, you know, go pound sand. I need to play 
you know, my uh, 15 subwoofers and my 30 speakers as loud as it possibly can go because I'm doing, you know, X, Y, Z and not having any, you know, thought of the people next door to them. And it, 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 it can be hard. Again, a narrow DJ on another floor, if the floor is thin and not insulated right with enough soundproofing, you run into that problem, you know, coming from upstairs or downstairs or, again, next door. It could be either way. So, Matt, I know you do a lot of events as well. And you probably you do more outside than inside, correct? Uh, I do more inside, but not. I don't think I've ever. It'd be only like a handful of times have I been at a venue where there's multiple areas and events going on. It's okay. pretty rare out here. Usually, it's a full venue buyout, um, or if there is two spaces, they're totally like completely self-contained wedding spaces that don't share anything in between. So, like, there's one that. There's an inside mansion area, and then there's a whole outdoor pergola, patio, whatever area. Um, so that sound doesn't bleed. They're, they're pretty then, far separated. So there's only one called the Reef in Long Beach, and like they'll have like three or four weddings going on at one day, but all the rooms are pretty separate, and and the sound doesn't really travel between them. So, uh, but I mean, you know me, we're gonna be the loudest one there anyway. So uh, I'm not gonna hear their stuff. <laughs> but I've never, I've never like. Yeah, we don't, I've never done like the air wall thing, like where one side and there's somebody right on the other side. That would be that'd be a bit troublesome, I think. Yeah, and that that's that's a hard thing is that uh, when you're trying to do things, you're trying to have you know a level of service and have uh, you know, someone who doesn't want to either work with you or someone who just doesn't care what's going on in another area of the. Uh, uh, of the building, um, it can affect you very heavily. So, DJ Brentley, I'm sure you run into a few places up there in beautiful Wisconsin that have multiple venues, uh, multiple uh, events going at a venue, and that they had the lovely floating walls and have another DJ or a band or whatever on the other side of the wall, and stuff is bleeding through. How do you compensate for that? How do you, do you try to compensate? Do you try to do anything? Do you try to talk to them or? I've been fortunate enough not to have to deal with that for a wedding, honestly. And even at celebrations on the river, for example, where I'm at a lot, they now have, well, they've always, they have three, you know, separate wedding rooms. And the only time you, that sound bleed problem becomes an issue is for ceremonies if one runs late. So they generally try to have like, one's at 3.30, one's at 4.00 ones at five, so they stagger everything out, which in turn will also stagger out, you know, dinner service, so, and one room, it just goes like a domino effect, room to room to room, but their rooms are so well put together, especially the last two rooms they did, that there's no sound bleed, the only places you can hear the bleed are if you're in the room that's in between each of the two venues, or in the catering room that's between the newest one and the middle one. So there's never really been an instance where I've had to worry about sound at a wedding. At clubs, I've seen that more often than not, because one of the places I do DJ at here in town, uh, Lacrosse Beer House and Legends, there are two clubs that, you know, one, share a base wall, but two, have an open door between the two venues. So there's been nights I'm like, okay, they're getting too loud over there. I can hear them over what I've been doing in here. I need to turn up. And at that point, I'm just turning up and turning my booth monitor up a little bit loud. And if I run it, if I were to run into that at an event like that, if the other room didn't want to turn down, I could always throw my booth monitors and face them to the crowd to give them a little bit more without totally destroying their eardrums like mine are. So I, I, I don't know... Uh... Uh, DJ Brantley, but you you seem like your audio, your your voice, and your video is off. You're talking, and it's it was like a dub movie, and like your voice okay. was way in advance of you talking. So let me probably, I'll be right back. No problem. Probably a glitch. <laughs> love the internet. Love technology. <laughs> we're, we're a slave of technology. Um, but yeah, it is it's very interesting that uh, both you, Matt, and uh, Brentley. Um, have dealt with uh, facilities that really don't run in too much of it 
or you're running around to like one or two facilities that you have. And he's more of the, the with the clubs, a couple of clubs he deals with have run into that. But uh, again, Dwayne has run into it kind of like I have. There's a few venues here in Illinois in the Chicago area that have mo- multiple weddings going at the same time. Uh, you can have a wedding of 150 people next to a three or 400 person wedding and they have the floating walls up that if they're a smart place, usually they have lots of space between the floating wall. They usually have a, a few feet, you know, five, six, 10 feet to be more of a buffer, but sometimes they don't. Sometimes right on the other side of that floating wall is a band, a DJ, whatever, and you do have to compete against them because they usually, again, this is a genius thing that they do, the venues, is put the two people who make noise back to back and say, oh, well, here you have one loud part right here. But if you run into something that someone has, you know, again, tons of equipment and you're out there with, you know, you have 150 people, you have equipment for that, or you have 100 people or even 200 people you may blow out the person next to you or may, or you may be blown up by them. And that's, that's not cool. That's not always a fun thing. Hey, Adrian. Hey, what's going on, man? And we also got what's up guys. What's up in the chat. Welcome. 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 Glad to see you guys here in the chat. Glad to see you guys talking and uh, make sure that you have anything you want to say, uh, go in there. What we're talking about, Adrian is venues. And I'm sure you run into it here because uh, Adrian's here in the Chicago area that have the famous uh, floating walls and do multiple events at the uh, same time. And asked by DJ Mikey Mike out in uh, out in Pennsylvania that he's uh, worked at places that have sound bleeding through from one room to the next where he's at. And the DJ on the other side uh, doesn't want to, you know, play nice, doesn't want to turn the volume down, tells you to basically pound sand or whatever. Uh, how do you compensate for that in that situation? That's what we're talking about right now. So you know what we're talking about. The The big thing is that I also believe, you know, when we're looking at venues and we're talking to people, if you had not been there before, is asking questions, you know, where the DJ set up at? Is there a more than one event? Uh, because I, I've run into it. I don't know if you guys run into it at uh, places uh, that have multiple events going on. People from other rooms or other areas coming into your event because you have better music. I've I've run into that plenty of time. You know the the wedding crashers that come in uh, from another room because they walk past and they they see people dancing the dance floor and people are out there having fun, enjoying themselves versus the other room where I walked past rooms that you know go to the restroom and looked in while stuff was going on. You know. They're before us, so it's right at the end of bath, uh, right at the end of uh, dinner. So I go run to the bathroom real quick, so I'm ready for the dance floor, ready for the rest of the night, and look in. They already got dancing going, and no one's dancing. People are just sitting there, and that's like I can hear the music. It either doesn't sound good or it's not a good mix. Uh, what do you do when there's uh, wedding crashers? So uh, uh, DJ Salsa's is Matt. If you have wedding crashers, what do you usually do for your uh, your crashers when you see them? Uh, you call them out or anything like that, or you just tell staff, hey. No, it, usually that's the coordinator or, or somebody will tell somebody there. I've never had a, a wedding crasher. Um, yeah, I don't, I've never had one. Um, I've had, like, you know, estranged parents or exes come by, uh, but security dealt with them. And, uh, but, yeah, normally at my weddings, I don't, I've never... Besides that one time, I don't think it's ever happened. Uh, I wouldn't call them out. It's not my place. Uh, I mean, as long as they're not causing trouble with me, I don't care if they're there. Not my, <laughs> you know, if there's not a seat for them, like if they come during the dancing part and like they're friends with the bride and groom, like are they really going to kick them out? Probably not. Um, dinner wise, if they try to show up and they're not invited, that's something else because um, there's probably not a seat for them and they didn't pay for them and that's different. But if they come for the party part, you know, I mean... I, I don't know. I've never ran into that yet. And that that's the that's the hard part is uh uh when they come in. I again I, I you know, only time I've run into it and I've seen it is dance floor. Dance floor's open, people are dancing. Um really never heard of them going up to the bar and drinking from the bar so much, but more or less coming in because 
better dance music than what's going on in another wedding. They're like, they see people packed in a dance floor. They're like, oh man, this is a party. I want to go to it. And it is, this is what happened to Tracy and I, when we got married, we did a conga line into the other room and we came back uh, into our room uh, from the other room. And we picked up like 15 or 20 people because we were having fun. The other wedding was like dead. So it, it's, it's just one of the things you have to kind of look at. Uh, Dwayne, what about you? Have you run into, um, have you run into uh, wedding crashers at a event, the place that you do upstairs and downstairs? Have you had people come down and start dancing in your dance floor versus uh, they're at the, from the other wedding or another event? If I have, I didn't know because a lot of people, I didn't know who was the guest, who's supposed to be there or not. So I, I wouldn't know. I'm busy doing my thing. I had people on the floor, so I wasn't paying attention, like exactly who's supposed to be there or not. Uh, well, you can kind of—I don't know. I can kind of tell. And excuse me, my uh, my furry daughter wants to play uh, <laughs> pizza. Um, I can kind of tell a lot of times. You start getting to know the people who are there dancing. Now, so you see these faces, you're like, who are these people? And they're dressed sometimes differently than the people there for the wedding or there for that event. It's like, you know, different, you can tell they're a different crowd, um, either different suits, different way of dressing, whatever. And it's like, it's, it's nothing bad. Usually it's, it's people that um, are just there to have fun. And sometimes I get, I don't, I don't pay attention to the bar because usually I don't look at that. But usually a lot of times I hear from the bartenders, like these people came in, uh, they danced, they came, uh, you know, they grabbed a, it's open bar. So they grabbed, you know, waters or drinks, stuff like that. And, you know, and they, they, they danced and they left and you hear from bartenders once in a while, but it's always, uh, I always get bang out of that. So DJ Brantley, I asked this question when you're doing your technical fix there. I see you changed your cameras. <laughs> I changed computers. There you go. Uh, was this, if you, have you run into when you're doing a wedding or an event at a facility that um, um, have you had, you know, wedding crashes come to your dance floor, you know, your, your, the dance floor is open and all of a sudden the people are at the wedding next door. They hear the music. They're like, uh, whatever's going on next door is not good mix, not good music, not good, whatever. They decide, hey, you know what? There's more of a party in your room than the other room. And they come in and they start dancing on your dance floor. Uh, do you do anything? Do you say anything? Or you just say, hey, you know, I got more people now. <laughs> I've got some, I'm that good or I'm that much better than the other DJ. And then you don't want to pat yourself in the back, but you're like, I know I'm doing the right things. I mean, at celebrations, it really hasn't happened. There's only been one instance where there was an issue between a couple people when they had a shared bathroom between two venues and a little bit of a scuffle broke out. So that kind of ended that. Uh, but I've definitely, let's see, there was this time I was outside of the Des Moines, Iowa and in a really nice venue that was attached to a bar and long story. I mean, long story short, after the ambulance came, uh, the bar next door, I went to the bathroom, which it shares, Oh yeah, there there was the run. We don't talk about the run anymore. Uh, but what happened to Iowa stays in Iowa is like what happened to Vegas stays you know, in Vegas. A, there was a ten month run where I was seeing ambulances left and right. In fact, one of them was the fight with the two weddings in between the shared bathrooms at celebrations. I mean, it was just getting you know kind of out of hand. But on the other side of it, like when I was there, they shared the bathrooms with the bar. You had to go out one door. And the bar had to go out of door. So uh, somebody had asked for Paradise by the Dashboard Light. And I normally don't play it. But I'm like, well, I'm going to use the bathroom. I'm going to go have a quick smoke. And after they do you know, the back and forth for a little while, I'll come over and change songs and get back to it. I look next door at the bar. And everybody in the bar is like sitting around bored. Like, and there had to be a, at least 100 people in there, if not more. And so I go, and I don't know, I, maybe it was me going back and forth, or maybe somebody told the bar to come over. But the next thing I look up, and now the bride is telling everybody, to come into the party, let's go, let's go. And uh, it went from like, 
70, 80 people still at this reception to like 200. And then there's other venues where like Petty Moan here in La Crosse, where it's a re it has an event center, but it's attached to a resort and campground and tr like, you know, summer trailer place where you can park your trailer, go fishing and do all of that. And they have a bar directly behind where the event center, the event room is. And it's happened numerous times where the people in the bar just walk, walk themselves in and help themselves to partying, I guess, is the best way to look at it. And a couple of people have been like, you guys need to go. Most are pretty cool because it's, you know, it's lacrosse. The rules and laws don't apply here kind of thing. So no one really cares if you're doing it or not. Just don't be a jerk and don't drink our free beer is kind of the way I look at it. Okay. So we got a little information here. Uh, Adrian E. is answering in on the first question. Uh, wedding factories. Uh, he had a couple of weeks ago, uh, which we have a lot of those facilities here. Hopefully, it's probably one of the facilities I've probably been to. Adrian and I, we, we, we bounce a lot of similar facilities here and there. Um, had a situation where the other event started before me. That's that time difference, like I said before, uh, where his, uh, his party was having dinner. The other one started their dance set. So you're having dinner. You're having, you know, whatever you're playing for your dinner set, be it Frank Sinatra or Mike Bublé or whatever it is. Usually it's more, you know, a little more laid back, a little bit more, you know, Nice, good, you know, upbeat music, but not loud. And they already had their dance set going off already. So again, like like I said before, they're they're playing low or whatever next door, and it's bleeding through. And he said the sound was leaking. It was frustrating. Um, got another one saying it happens a lot on hotel venues. People just walk in and start partying. That goes to the people, you know, when they walk past and they see you have a, a dance floor popping. People see that they get enticed to come in. Um, let's see. He also said, yeah, I beat him. To, uh, the Adrian E says, I beat him to a punch. But the conga line, I, I will use that all the time. And he laughed. Then he also added in, damn, DJ Brentley, sun's out, guns out, son. So, <laughs> um, and then, uh, like Matt said, a long as they don't mess with me, I don't care for it. So as long as they don't mess with you as a DJ, he's like, well, whatever, you know, you want to come in and dance, that's fine. I just find it funny. Um, and I just find it kind of humorous is that you get uh, the bleed of other people come walking in to the room because of the fact that you're, again, your dance floor's popping, you're, you're, hit, you're hitting the right hits. The right music, people see it and they see that and they come walking in and do stuff. I, I find it funny. So the next question, uh, of course, today here in Chicago um, on uh, June 26, uh, we have Marquee starting today. And so a lot of vendors are here in Schaumburg and uh, basically it's... 35 minutes for me, north and east um, for me. So um, they're here in Chicago. They're, they have a bunch of vendors here. Uh, I didn't see all the vendors, but I, I saw like Evie and Chave and a few others. I was watching uh, uh, DJ Rachel, which has been on the show before. She had her live streams on Facebook. She was uh, streaming a little bit from uh, the show. And uh, Casey was talking about, this, uh, talk about stuff this morning. If you get a chance to, Go over by her Facebook page and watch the videos. It's, it's really great. It's great stuff. Uh, she was trying a new microphone out, which was pretty cool. Um, and one of the things like I asked you guys, I know we're always looking at equipment, iron equipment, and so forth and so on, and looking at, hey, you know what? Maybe we should upgrade this. Maybe we should upgrade that. Is there anything else this year? Because this is June, and this is basically halfway through. You know, we're getting, We're basically halfway through the year already. Is there something else that you're eyeing that you want to get this year for your business? So, Dwayne, is there something you're dying to get for your business? And if so, what is it? Um, not really hardware, but I'm interested in the that whole uh, AI lightning new packages that's supposed to be right out the box. Then can just 
do what you wanted to do without doing a lot of programming or you know pre um, music analyzing. So that's what I'm like interested in. So you want a Terminator out there terminating your lights, your lights. If only it was that easy. Those AI systems I don't think are going to work as quite as good as people think. Well, uh, well, again, you want Skynet controlling your lights. You know, it's basically that's what you're looking even, at. But even, it sounds even interesting. Sound you gotta like to have a good light show. I'm on that laptop the whole time. So I mean, almost every yeah, I you never see me just standing around. Like after I get a song, mix it in. Like my right hand is controlling the lights to make these light shows. Like there's programs and like sequences, sure, but like. They get old after four or five seconds. So just people that just leave sound switch on auto loops all night, like, I, I don't know. I, I just, I don't think these AI things are going to do, like, lighting is so complex that in, I think, like, companies, what, like, what Chevet is doing with their ILS system, it's like they're pre-programming their own lights so that you just have a smaller little controller to operate with them. But it's still a beefy controller that more than likely you need a dedicated second person to run. It's just helping you so you don't have to learn DMX. Uh, well, but. the the other thing on that, uh, Matt, is when you look at that uh, for the uh, AI for lights and stuff like that, it, it, it it's complicated because the fact that there's a lot going on and listening to music, and if you want to do certain shows and do certain things. But I know that DJ Brentley, he uses the uh, AI software that's built into Recordbox with his... Uh, um, his uh, Flex 10, and I know it's his, unfortunately got hurt this weekend. We'll talk about that in a minute or two. And the thing is that he does do the DMX out on that, and has actually been very impressed with that. Uh, is it on There's, level skill as as you are, Matt? I doubt it, but the thing is that you've been very impressed with it, right, Matt, uh, right, uh, Brentley? I am, actually. And now that I've taken – thanks to watching some of Matt's shows and his um, gig logs – I've actually taken to being better about my lighting when I'm mixing live. And with record box, it's nice that I'm just, you know, hitting my mouse, changing my show, changing my setting so it doesn't get stale. And when I need to hit the strobe section of it, I can do that with all of them or certain ones based on how I've got it set. So it's definitely, and if I don't like how any of the light settings are, it gives you the ability to A, change it on the fly. So if you know it's coming to a sequence that you don't like, you can change it to one you do. And based on like the 15, it'll scroll out for you immediately. And then if you may remember to change it, you can go back in the macro of the program and change it to do what you want for that song. So it gives you a lot of options. Um, with the Flex 10, it's a great thing. And I had to make, I have the RB DMX1 box for record box which goes into your computer and then into your lighting show. So it's an extra piece of equipment, an extra something to get glitchy or whatever. But I had to bust it out and realize that I just need to keep my cables taped down so if it, if it, if, and put something padded on it so I don't give it a hard ride this weekend until I get a new Flex 10 for now. Or I'm honestly really thinking about an S11 and a pair of CDJs at this point and just having the box in each one of my setups. So... My lights plug into that, and we're just good to go. Cause I wasn't even I wasn't even doing anything rough on my Flex Ten. I don't I'm not a scratch DJ, so I'm not. You might hear me drop, you know, throw a couple drops in or anything, but I'm not super crazy with how I hit my controller. I'm hard on them. You can definitely see the wear and tear where my finger drags on the on you know where on the fader paint. But yeah, so I'm. Two months into it, I'm really disappointed this day. Really disappointed. But for the lighting aspect of it, I love Record Box. It does have, and you can, there's a lot you can do with it. And as I keep using it and want to find out more, I'm realizing, you know, I can get schooled on how it works every time as I look at their videos and their tutorials to see what more I can do with it. Now, I'm really, you definitely need, well, you know, you're a lot of lights, like want to match lighting setups to make it work well or make it look really good, which I found out. So I've been bringing heads, throwing my up lights into it now and really programming everything I'm using that's, you know, within a certain area of the dance floor to focus on my, my dance floor lighting. 
My other room ones around the room, I just still leave static, but the ones that are around the dance floor, I really want to integrate better. And I didn't realize how intuitive a lot of the software was if like until I really started using it and seeing what I could do with it in front of a lot of people. So the um again the mishap you had uh, this weekend, uh you you it was your crossfader, correct? Yep. And one of my uh, assignment now uh toggles went with it. So I'm what is it, channel two? is stuck on through mode. My crossfader isn't working. So something happened. I don't know what. And I'm sure because that was the channel I was using when I was going for the fade. But I wound up having to, you know, man, like I fit, finally figured out like the crossfader was broken when I looked at my screen. And I'm like, oh, my fader. Okay. Center it. And then I'm like, okay, channel two is, is doing this and this. I can't get that to work. So I wound up mixing off of channel one and channel four. And just having to play, you know, the up and down game, which it's definitely old school in a lot of ways, made me really think about what I was, once I figured it out, like, think about what I'm playing, what kind of intro it really has. on it, And it gave me 45 plus minutes where I couldn't just kind of, okay, you're playing this, 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 and this, go for it. I've really got to go, okay, this has this intro to it. This has this outro. You can't slam out of this part of the song here. How are you going to play these games you do and keep people entertained with the, you know, with your mix? So it was a definite challenge for me. It really made me have to think things through. And that that's that's always a hard part when something happens. And you have you have a backup controller, correct? I, I have a couple. Yeah. That's I think that is a smart thing. If something happens to your equipment, um, you want to make sure you have backup. Doesn't matter what kind of gear you have. Like I still have my SX2. I still have my CDJs. Um, so I have you know backup on top of backup. And again, my CDJs, they're probably nine years old. They're they're 900 <coughs> Nexus uh, CDJs and 900 Nexus mixer. So uh, you know they're 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 a little older. The SX2 is seven years old, and my XZ I got last year. Uh, but if something happens to something, I got to send something in. I feel that it, you need to have backup gear. You need to have backup plans because things happen. You know, here's yeah. a brand new F Flex 10, and whatever happened, happened. And then you got to send in the Pioneer for repair. It's going to be gone for a bit. It depends on what's wrong with it, when they get parts and so forth. And it's it's like if you took it anywhere that the repairs and stuff, you send it to an authorized repair place. I just had it. Uh, with my speakers, I had the speaker slide off onto uh, concrete, and both speakers fall off the top from the uh, top of the cart, you know, onto, on the cart onto the ground. It wasn't like they got slammed or anything; they, they fell off onto the side. And I had one with no subwoofer and one with uh, a rattle. The rattle was a, a low screw they fixed, and I was like, you know, they charged me you know seventy bucks to fix that, but the other one had a cracked. Woofer, a cracked board, something broke inside, and they had they actually had a wait for parts from RCF to get it to re repair. But I have backup; I've worn one pair of RCF J8s, so I had used my white pair a few times. That you know, and of course, I also have my uh, LD Systems Maui fives I use for mains too. So I have multiple speakers. Plus, I still have my PRX. I still have Eons. So I still have multiple speakers if I need to do them in case I need to use them. So if I got to use something, I need to have backup. And I think that's being, you know, smart and being self-reliant is having backup gear. Um, oh, uh, what's up, uh, Jim? Jim, uh, Iron Man's in here. He said, a buddy, sir. What's going on, Jim? I just saw you just now. I'm sorry. I didn't see you earlier. So with, with that said, um, is there gear that you're dying It's my turn. <laughs> is there gear you're dying for matt i okay so if an angel just blessed me with fifteen thousand tomorrow i would buy uh, a 30 by 30 foot white dance floor um and start renting that uh which would be about 10 grand um from china obviously white cases and um that and then uh i've been looking at getting a pair with a few people of white l acoustics dual 18 subwoofers um there's some from a 
warehouse that is closing their production side for a hell of a deal. And uh, we're looking into them. Um, obviously, they're expensive, but uh, there's just no. So like to complete the white look for a big wedding, I don't have low end that can do that. Um, I have high end. Well, even high end, I, whatever. I mean, it's easier to hide like a loudspeaker behind a pipe and drape than it is to uh, hide a giant subwoofer. So uh, I'm looking looking at those. But um, what what's the price in the subs? Uh, they are about twenty five to thirty thousand. Um, I think total, not not each. Um, their price. I no, I think that that's like original. I don't know the original price, but uh, Matt Price is that high. Yeah, but uh, so I'm looking into that because I, I would love to get like actual dual 18s in white but there's not really companies that do powered versions of that unfortunately uh, what, about LD, what about ld systems uh, they are not powerful enough i i don't those only come with well you could buy just this can you buy just a subunit for the g3 that's a 15 it's not it might be an 18 i don't know it's not powerful enough i don't know 15 puts out good mob base you get two of those you, you're you're hitting pretty hard i know you want that low end that you know, people have feel four, four blocks away, but I don't, grandma doesn't want her teeth knocked out at the wedding. <laughs> so that, that's what I'd buy. There's also like, um, uh, what else? I would probably get, so, oh, well, what my plan is, is once the new MacBook comes out, when the new MacBook Pro comes out, whatever the next model is, I'm going to get that and put either Virtual DJ or Serato um, on there and then start slowly transitioning stuff into there still having my normal setup and uh so i'd probably get like the rain one uh just because i liked playing with that when i had a chance to versus the, the pioneer controllers so that's probably what i'd get um if i had if i could but uh yeah the the, the rain the rain the rain does uh pretty good equipment uh i would say definitely say they're on for quality level on par with pioneer two different manufacturers different thoughts of doing things it's like looking at you know a Lexus versus a Mercedes. They're both high-end vehicles, but they do different ways of doing the same thing. And, you know, again, you have to decide what's best for you. Is Pioneer or Rain? Again, they're both great stuff. And there's there's stuff in the middle, middle price stuff too, you know, that works really good. Uh, that's out there. That That's really great things. You know, uh, Hercules came out with new control. There's a bunch of people come out with new stuff. And it's kind of funny now that, you know, the supply chain's cutting back. I wouldn't say to normal, but closer to normal. It's probably like eighty percent there. You're starting to see this stuff now. Yeah, still not for RCF, unfortunately. I'm I'm still waiting for my dual, uh, my single dual eighteen from them, the the new NX uh, or the eight thousand eight version, which is similar. It's the same finish as the the NX line, so it would match my my NXL towers. Cool. Well, we'll wait to we can't wait to see that one. So one other thing also on that dance floor, is that the the, the white dance floors with the little white LEDs in there? Uh yeah, no, just regular white wood. Um uh, I don't I don't do the the little dots. So I mean the weddings that I DJ, uh either the dance floor is like already part of the venue or some outside company does it. It's either a wooden one with a white uh vinyl over it or a white dance floor. I don't really see too many of those old school wooden ones unless it's included with the venue because they're just, they're ugly and they just scream old school. So uh, I figure if I had a white one, it would be wonderful. Um, some of those portable dance floors, I have seen some of the videos, ven venues put them together and it kind of sometimes scares me. It's like, uh, yeah, they, they go into the little key and they turn the little key to lock everything and it's like, uh, when does one of those little keys get loose and get knocked loose and all of a sudden the floor splits like the Red Sea and then you have people falling down. You know, it's, that's only a bad thing with those portable dance floors. It, it's, I, I, I understand a lot of DJs who do it and have the like the LED ones or they have a white one or whatever. Uh, I've seen a couple of people actually get the whole entire dance floor uh, with a vinyl cover on it. Uh, with their names and stuff like that uh, on the dance floor, kind of like a gobo, but they have a monogram onto the floor and in charge. It's not cheap. It, uh, I was talking to a venue manager. He just had it happen at his other venue. And I was like, I want to say uh, it was like five or $6,000 to have 
you know, a, a 10 by 10 space on the dance floor covered with this white vinyl material that's designed that's not slick even when wet. And then it had uh, their basically their uh, monogram on it, but they screwed up and the monogram facing the head table, not facing the people. So they had reversed. They should have reversed it so it faces the people so they know where the, the head table sees the back of it and the people see the name. Dual uh, dual 18 L Acoustics, uh, brand new, uh, $9,400. Um, and they're passive, by the way. So you do need a special amp to run them. So add another grand or so for the amp. But this guy's got a pair of the white ones with the amp that he's selling for, I think, 13 I don't know. It's for two of them. That, that, that right there, yeah, that's that's not a bad deal. Yeah, so I, I don't know. It's like I said, it's I it's just a, a pipe dream. I'm not rushing to get them, but I would like to, uh, you know, when I do my big setups with the truss and the bigger, the you know, the flowers and, and everything, like to have giant black boxes on the side doesn't look as, as nice as, you know, white. I, I, I don't blame you. Uh, so, Brentley, I know we talked a little bit about your Flex 10 having a little problem, and but is there uh, is there something on the uh, the wish list that you want to have for this year that you want to put a little money on? I know you said that you're some CDJs I heard a, little, a minute or two ago. I'm really debating getting an S11 and a pair of CDJs. I'm really debating it. I'm not sure if I should or shouldn't. It, I mean, part of it's going to depend on the turnaround time for the Flex 10. I'm looking to get another one now just because I need something on the fly to replace it. And if I have two of them, I will dump one when one comes back maybe, or who knows, but I, I'm definitely considered considering an S11 at least at that point. And I can throw tables on it or I can use CDJs. I just saw, I got an email and I will share this with the class um from a company uh, if i can find the email really quickly uh with a free case um partner gg products at gmail.com so it comes in as i don't know who they are i've not bought anything from them but they have here uh flex 10 um 1389 you know they buy it now and it comes with a free case so i don't know who they are i don't know i've not clicked on any of their links or anything like that uh but it's pioneer dj products at gmail.com so i don't know if they're legitimate or this is a you know, a spoof or what? I don't hear any sound coming from you, Brentley. You guys hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, I hear you. Nope, don't hear you now. <laughs> Technical problems. <laughs> but uh yeah, I would definitely would look at, you know. I hear you, I hear you, you hear now. now. It's cuz Mira came in here and took my Bluetooth from my computer. There you go. Bluetooth. There you go. We're going to hear uh TikTok songs all night then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, it it happens. It's no big deal. Um, I get I, the furry one keeps coming here, wants to be petted. So, uh, you're you're bothered by uh, not not that's not bothered, but your daughter keeps coming by you because again she wants to talk to you and stuff. I have my furry daughter coming by me. Yep. Um, if my other daughter was here, you'd see a, a nice beautiful redhead come walking in and go like, "Hi, Dad," and bother me for stuff. So, <laughs> she's not here. She's at her house, and uh, I'm at my house. <laughs> but it's 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 again it's it's stuff i get you know emails all the time i don't know who the vendor is i don't know if anyone's buying anything from that vendor um but that's something i just saw and 
it's something that even you went to one of the other stores, they they have it in stock, they may match that deal, be it, you know, PSSL or um, Canal Light and Sound uh, out in New York. They do a lot of that stuff. Uh, there's a lot of great vendors out there. Uh, uh, NFLX uh, Pro, um, Sweetwater, there, I can go through a whole list of uh, different places to buy stuff. They have great, great, great buys and my sweet, they'll work with you. My Sweetwater rep, uh, my Sweetwater rep ghosted me. I haven't heard from him in a month and I text him and he, no, he doesn't text me back anymore. I don't know if he works there what? any longer. <laughs> Sad, I know, right? They're so overbearing that you're like, this is so odd. They're ghosting me. What? Okay. Um, Christian Good is my guy who I always deal with. Get a hold of Christian Good. All right. I had, uh, I don't even remember his Nick, Nick, some Nick, uh, Nick, I don't remember his last name. Uh, I'm turning out Christian. Nick, 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 if any of you guys out there are looking for stuff and you talk to Sweetwater, ask for Christian Good. Christian Good. Christian All Good right. is the person you want to talk to. I, he's in a band. Uh, so he's a band guy, but he does DJ stuff. He's really good about stuff. He's very honest, very upfront, like most people from Sweetwater are. If they can get something, they will. And they do carry RCF. Yeah, I know. They just started. Uh... Yep. They just started carrying R RCF, which I'm like, oh, okay. So when new stuff comes out, I, I guess I'd be, uh, I'm would be i going to be bugging Sweetwater for stuff. If, if you want the best RCF deals, uh, there's a company called VIP Pro Audio out of New York. They have by far the best RCF deals. And they're also like supposedly the number one distributor of RCF in the country. Um, they do push a ton of numbers, but uh, they're waiting just like everybody else is for these dual 18. So I, you know, I have one on order with B and H, but whoever gets it first, that's going to get my money. Yeah. And that, that's, that's the hard part with, you know, supply chains again, look for, I'm hearing about 80% there for the most part for stuff. Um, but it's still not hundred percent. You're still probably talking another, another year or so that's one of the things like i heard with nam it's a lot of the venue vendors vendors there were getting product in but not enough product and they were kind of hesitant and that's why they pushed you know it back had it an odd time versus it goes back to this normal time next year because they were like okay by 2024 we'll have all this new product in here we can actually showcase everything properly and that that's hard for the vendors too because if you're a manufacturer and you want to showcase newest, latest, greatest, whatever, you want to make sure you have product in there so people can like, you know, especially now where you're selling to the stores and you also have the public walk in there. They want to go to the stores, be it Sweetwater, be it NFL, uh, NFL X Pro, be it whomever it is, PSSL, Canal Light and Sound, whoever it is, go there and order stuff. Um, you want to make sure that those stores have your product. So, you're taking that product and shipping it out to your your vendors as quickly as possible, so they can get in the hand of us, the end users. And that's the hard part. It's it's always a, a game with that. So, really quick question for you guys: um, Since we're off next week, what are your plans for July fourth? I, I know third is a Monday, fourth is a Tuesday. Are you going to be grilling and chilling and watching fireworks from your neighbors shooting fireworks off their uh, their porch or backyard? Or are you going somewhere for organized fireworks? Or do you have a gig on July 4th? So, Matt, what's your 4th of July plans for this year? Uh, another year, another not gig, another year of no gigs on 4th of July. I, just, I don't do well with these little, like, don't call it it not photo whatever you call them like uh i don't know i i had a, a last minute one last year that my my buddy kind of subbed out to me that was for you know a, a run like a morning afternoon run and fair but i think i'm just gonna i don't have anything on the books we have uh right by where my my parents live they have a big street there um that was kind of sad last year but maybe it'll be back to its former glory now that COVID is mostly gone um i think that was kind of why last year it was scaled back but so I might check that out. They do a decent fireworks show. Um, may go check out the fireworks at Disneyland because you could just kind of stand anywhere and they pipe the music throughout. So uh, I don't know. Uh, fireworks at some point. Fireworks are not legal here, so I can't launch crazy ones, unfortunately. Uh, but it's whatever. Okay. So and in Illinois, it's like California. Fireworks are technically illegal, but 
people still go to like Indiana and Wisconsin and other states around and get fireworks. Uh, DJ Brentley's uh, neighbors are uh, selling us Illinoisans fireworks. Uh, I'm just saying that as a joke, not as reality, but uh, it's unfortunately, true. it's so true. People go up there and buy for it. And again, Brentley is from Chicago. He knows what it is. People go to Indiana, you go to Wisconsin, they go to Iowa. It's Missouri does it. Kentucky does it. You know, everyone else around us doesn't, does it, but us, you know, it's like, oh, come on now. Um, so the 4th of uh, July and or the 3rd of July, or do you have gigs then or do you have fireworks or what are you doing? I'm gigging all the way up until the 4th. I don't have a gig on the 4th, but my gig schedule starts. I actually gave one of my gigs up tomorrow <laughs> uh, running karaoke just because I've got Thursday, Friday, and uh, the college clubs here in La Crosse. I run down to Madison on Saturday for a wedding and then come back up to do Sunday and Monday at Animal House here. So uh, on Tuesday, I'll be very thankful to have the afternoon morning off and chill with the kid, go to the fireworks here in town. So I think it'll just probably be her and me because I think her mom's got to work the next day too. So go down to the big, you know, what's called River Fest, let her load up on, you know, ice cream, candy, junk food. Funnel cake and all the fun stuff, fireworks. yeah. Do they get uh, fried butter up there? I've seen it, but um, no, I'm not trying it. No. 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 Uh, Illinois State Fair has deep fried butter. Iowa has deep fried butter too. Yep. And don't forget, uh, Illinois State Fair has a butter cow, which I'm like, that should be a Wisconsin thing for me, but Illinois has a butter cow. I'll stick some cheese curds. <laughs> so, Dwayne, what about you? Do you have anything coming up for the uh, fourth weekend? I don't have anything official, but we're talking about my family and friends talking about either going to Cedar Point, the amusement park, or going to like one of those virtual reality shooting places. But uh, we don't do that. Then we usually meet at one of our houses and basically I DJ and then entertain the block while we eat and party outside in the backyard. Cool, man. Cool. That, that sounds like fun. Cedar Point. Cedar Point's fun. It's a... Uh... Better than Six Flags out here, that's for sure. Six Flags out here is trash. I mean, yeah, uh, this the one here is up in uh, Gurney. Uh, have never, I've been there in billionaires, but I know they do fireworks. But um, here on the fourth, if I remember correctly, I, I've been looking at fireworks for the past uh, a couple of days, trying to figure out, trying to do some stuff with some friends too. So Tracy, and I have something to do, go to and do. Uh, I'm going to try and see if our my, our, my our daughter and and uh, granddaughter and stuff are, uh, can go too. But Itasca, Illinois, the village of Itasca, uh, they're touting themselves as the largest fireworks in the Midwest on the 4th. I don't know what they why they say that, who's doing it or whatever, but um, they're supposed to have a huge fire display on the 4th uh, right by I-290 and I-390. In uh, Itasca, Illinois, it's there's a big, huge uh, lake over there with a bunch of uh, basically uh, small skyscrapers there for uh, businesses. Um, there's a hotel there. There's a bunch of other uh, businesses, corporate offices there that have these uh, tall office buildings, and um, they uh, uh, they're got fireworks right in the little lake area there. And they said they're gonna have the, according to them, the largest, but. Uh, I will have to uh, tell you guys after the fourth if we get a chance to go there and I can tell you it was the biggest or, oh, yeah, it was pretty decent or it was, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, Adrian E says he's working on the first, second, and third, perhaps grilling early on the fourth and checking out local fireworks show. That, that's 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 great. Um, I have a wedding on the first. I'm going to be like three miles away from uh, Wrigleyville. Which, uh, you know, I, I don't know if uh, that minor league team is playing that uh, day or not. Um, but, um, I, you know, it doesn't matter to me because, you know, you, you know, again, Wrigleyville and drinking, it's synonymous over there. Again, when you're, when you're a Cubs fan, you, you got to drink your sorrows away. So all the bars are already packed. But I'll be about three miles away from Wrigleyville. Um, and unfortunately, because it's a wedding, I can't wear my White Sox stuff. Because I would definitely would wear white sock stuff because you know socks are better. <laughs> uh, 
This is this is the, Bradley and I we we go back and forth on it. This is a Chicago thing. It's like brothers teaching each other over stuff, you know. Uh, you got to be a Chicago and kind of understand. It. And Adrian E, he is a uh, White Sox fan like myself, so uh, he will he will rock it out. But uh, <laughs> it, it's 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 one of the things that uh, you got to have some fun. Again, it's it's fun humor. It's nothing bad. But I will be. Uh, again, right by Wrigleyville on the first, and then the second, third, and fourth, I'm off. But again, I'm looking to do some fireworks with some friends, watch the fireworks. I, I don't want to go buy them. I don't want to deal with them. I'm not 20 years old. I'm not going to be taking bottle rock and shooting them out of my hand or or anything like that. I want to, you know, just uh, just watch them not blow off MADs or blow off uh, digits. That's not why I want. I'm not as quick as I was once was, and I don't want to try to run away from MAD and trip and fall and. Also, I'm in the ER with a leg missing. I'm on TV. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I much rather leave it to the professionals and watch them shoot them off than uh, I do it. But now that the end of the show is here, I just want to thank you guys all for being here. And I want to thank you guys all for watching the show. If you have not done so already, if you're watching the show, you're new to the show here on Twitch, make sure you follow the channel. I also do some DJing here. Uh, as well, I do uh, music videos, and if you haven't done so already, if you follow the channel on Twitch, please do so. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the like button, click the subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, tell a friend, and also go over on Twitch, follow us on Twitch over there. We do it live on Tuesday nights, 8 o'clock Central Time, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, that's 6 o'clock Pacific Time for you guys out on the West Coast. So, again, if you're anywhere in the continental United States or Canada, you can watch us and give you kind of an idea if you're in one of the time zones or before or after to kind of give you some references there. Uh, we do it live. We take live questions and, live, and try to answer those questions live. But we want to hear your comments, your critiques, criticisms, tomfoolery, anything else you want to say down below. Please put it down below down there. And we want to make sure that we answer those questions. The last question was from DJ Mikey Mike. Uh, Pennsylvania, he asked the question of about uh, venues within walls. So if you haven't done so already, again, follow everyone else here. They all the links will be down below. Other than that, guys, we appreciate you guys all for watching. Be safe. Have a happy 4th of July. And we'll see you guys in two weeks. See you guys later. Peace. <laughs>